Hi, this is Dr. David Potter, and welcome to Potter's Podcasts and Inspirations. Today, uh, we're delighted to have inspirational and amazing Rob Roche. Okay, Rob Roche is CEO and president of RSR Sports Management. That's a sports management firm that specializes in representing NFL players, coaches, and broadcasters. And I've, I've been fortunate enough to know Rob for many, many years. And the thing that's so inspirational for me about Rob Roach is that he took several areas of expertise and enjoyed and combined them. I remember asking years ago, like, how do you even decide to, to combine these? And he said, well, it was fun. And I mean, what a way to kind of approach uh, your professional life. So Rob, let me just first open up by asking you, how did you end up working with the NFL uh, working in law, and now teaching sports management. Yeah, sure, Dr. Potter. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Pretty cool coming on and talking to you guys. Um, you know, I started my journey, you know, I, I was always into football, and that was something that, I, that was one of the first things I really felt that I was good at, you know, growing up. And I knew I, I love football. I still do to this day. And so part of my thought process was, Doc, was I said, okay, how can I take my love for football and be connected with it in some fashion and still make a good living and provide for a family. I wanted to have kids and stuff like that and have a family. And the thought came to me while I was in college at college in New Jersey was, Hey, you know what? I can be a football agent, NFL agent for players. I can go to law school, get my law degree and combine those two passions of football and law and actually help players do good things in the national football league and negotiate their contracts. And by the same token, make good money, you know, for my family and stuff like that. And so that really was the original inspiration and thought process that started the whole thing rolling. And, you know, then you always think about, okay, well, how do I do it? And uh, that's always the next question that comes down the pike. Right. So, so from the very beginning, you had your eyes on combining them, or is that just something you fell into? Yeah, that was my, that was my, eye, my eyes on combining them. Because I played football wow. in college in New Jersey. I played one year there at TCNJ, wide receiver. And I knew, you know, my football career was going to go no further than Division three football. And so, but I knew it's what I loved. And so it's like, okay, how can I be connected with football and make a really good living and, and you know, and have fun with what I'm doing? And it was before Jerry Maguire movie came out. It was way before that, before it was in vogue to be a sports agent. But, you know, I saw that like that aspect of the business and I said, okay, that's something that I can do. I believe I can do that. And I'd be able to connect with players because I know football and I played football. So I'd be able to connect with the athletes. And the next step of the process was to, okay, how do I get there? And let me get my law degree. So I'm able to negotiate contracts and get that expertise to negotiate deals. And that's going to help me get players. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I remember I was a sophomore, I was a junior at college, college TCNJ, and that's the thought process I had. I wanted to get to law school, get my law degree, and um, I want to represent football players. And Rob, one of the things, you're so personal and authentic that uh, I, I would imagine that immediately these players can relate to you. So how do you, cre how do you go in and, and create a relationship of trust right away when you when you start with a client it's just about it's like anything like it's like any other business or any other people you deal with it's just connecting with people i think you know listening i think you know one of the biggest things you can do as a, a in sales is listen you know if you listen to what people are saying and really listen to them you can see what they're into and then you can actually you know try to relate and try to connect and the way i've always approached it was you know, I'm here to help that player. And if I can do that and I can bring that value and show that value to that player, the player is going to want to talk to me and he's going to have an interest in it. Um, it's not all about me where I got to go in there and say how great I am and stuff like that and all the things I've done in the past. But it's about what do I bring to the table for that player and listening to what that player's real needs are and what they're looking for. In recent years, it's, it's interesting because I know you've also done some film and TV work yourself. Mm -hmm. And I find it fascinating that as you 
Uh, and you said, you know, I said to you, why would you, you know, want to put another thing on your plate? And you're like, why not? It's fun. And um, what's interesting is several of your players also started to do, uh, you know, film and TV. And so do you find that, that by kind of jumping in yourself, you come from a place of uh, understanding of what it's like from both sides of the table? Yeah, hundred percent with the acting stuff that I've done, you know, how that started was, I, you know, I always knew it was in me and I knew I could do it. You know, like I can do that. You watch it, you know, you watch stuff from television and you're stuff like, I, I know I can do that. And it's just about getting the opportunity. And um, with regards to the players, it's been great because I do have that creative, uh, creative slant in terms of television, film and commercial stuff like that. And so I'm able to bring that insight to my athletes and to my players so that it helps them in terms of the creative process for them when they go to do commercials or, you know, some television work or whatever it may be. But it's fun, you know, negotiating contract for players and dealing with athletes. It's an enjoyable job. It's fun. And so that's where I come from too, is that like, you know what, if I'm going to spend my day working, majority of my time working, it might as well be in a field and an area that brings me fulfillment and joy and that I have, have fun with to do. That's great. And I mean, to follow your passions in a variety of different ways, whether it's law, it's, it's the acting, um, it's, it's the, you know, even the contractual agreements and then combine them all. I mean, that's really, really exciting, but I'm sure that there are a lot of obstacles and challenges that you had to overcome along the way. Can you speak to that and also, how you were able to overcome them. Right. Well, you know, it's funny in terms of you get – my first thing that I wanted to do was represent football players. So I got certified with the NFL Players Association to be an agent. And so you get certified, but you get certified, but no one tells you how to get clients. And so it's like, okay, I'm a certification, <laughs> but what do I do with it? How do I get, how do I get players to, to work with me? And, uh, you know, that process, again, is, is a lot of it's sales. I got to – Hey, in terms of being able to talk to people. Um, and I went out and recruited, you know, it was, I hate to say it, but it was in the beginning days of the internet. And so the internet back in those days, you know, you had to do dial up, but it kind of helped you a little bit to recruit guys and to look at who was going to be good and who was not good, and who to target. But I, you know, I went out and met with players and told them, listen, this is what I do. I, I do contracts. I, you know, I went to law school. I was in a sports law journal at Seton Hall University School of Law. And this is what I can do for you. And my f- first client was Neil Rackers, who got drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. And, um, you know, I went out to meet with him and his family out in St. Louis. And, um, you know, it was interesting. He asked me one question, which w- turned out to be a very important question, which I wasn't aware of at the time. He asked, he's like, who else are you here to see? And I didn't know what he was talking about. And I'm like, I flew out here to see you, Neil. I'm going to meet with you and I'm going to go back to the hotel and go to bed and wake up tomorrow morning and fly home. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, okay. And so, you know, a long time later, I always, I asked him, I said, Neil, I said, why, why did you sign with me? Like, what was it that made you sign with me? And he's like, I asked you one question. And he's like, I asked you who else you're here to see. And you said, I was the only person you were here to see. Every other agent that sat in that chair was here to see somebody else, another running back or a tight end that played in the area, stuff like that. He's like, so I knew that you were going to give my 100% of your time and effort to my case and to my career. And that's, you know, that's a 20 year relationship that I've had with Neil. Yeah. 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 And that's great. I think that also speaks to what makes you such a great teacher. I know you teach uh, sports management classes also, but that ability to make someone feel like they're the only one in the room, I think it's also what makes you a great father and a great partner. And I think, that story is just you being you really. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's all comes back down to like, this is whether you're teaching a class in sports management, at TCNJ or Drew university, or, you know, represent a football player. It's all about personal attention. And, you know, the, the acting stuff always helped me be more in the moment. You know, when you're speaking to someone or you're in front of the students or in front of, a, you know, a player that you want to recruit, being in that moment is so key. I think it's very helpful for me. You know, not yeah. to be someplace else or think about what, what I'm going to say next when a guy's talking to me or, or in class. 
Rob, have you ever had somebody where you're like, hey, this would be a great commercial for you, and they're just they just scared out of their wits, and you have to kind of talk them into it? I mean, have you ever had anything like that yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, with Justin, Justin Tucker, I represent from the Baltimore Ravens, he didn't want to do – there was this a talent show on CBS, and it was – the show was uh, – most valuable performer. And they wanted Justin to sing opera in seven different languages. They wanted Justin to be on that show. And uh, Justin, you know, was a little, a little hesitant to do it because he didn't want to, you know, be singing and all that kind of stuff. And talking to him and walking him through the process, I'm like, bro, there's going to be 8 million people watching this. It's on CBS. So, like, you're going to have 8 million eyeballs watching you do something different than kicking a football. And, you know, and to thinking a big picture – this is going to bring more endorsements down the road. Maybe not tomorrow, but down the road, someone's going to see this. Some executives are going to see this and say, why don't we have this guy endorse our product? Because he really was really talented. He, you know, he did the show, brought down the house and won the, won the contest, which is pretty cool. That is, that's real. That's a great story. Doc, the bigger full yeah. circle, when they showed it live, they showed it live and I was in my sports management class in my class, watch the show live. Wow. How cool is that? Right? That's really cool, man. That's really yeah. cool. So, I mean, it's just what I'm hearing you say is this, like, and I know this isn't always easy, Rob. I know we're talking about it now and it seems simple, but to really be committed to living with passion. And of course, I've known you for a while. So I know that you live uh, with, with passion in, in the relationships you foster with your clients and with your children. And so, um, but also the fact that if you can really commit to living passionately and not getting pulled into things that distract you from that, that it really opens doors, you know, personally and professionally. And so if people want, if they were students that wanted to attend your class or if they're athletes that may be interested uh, or people just interested looking for a, a good attorney, how would people get a hold of you? What do you suggest they do? Yeah, they can just reach me on my website. My website is um, rsrsports.com, rsrsports.com. All my information is right there on the website. But, yeah, they can reach me that way. And the two, two schools I teach at, I teach at College of New Jersey in the spring, and then I teach uh, at Drew University in the fall and also the spring, the sports management class. That's great, Rob. Hey, listen, thank you so much, not just for what you do, but for coming on today. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Got you. It, Doc. it was a pleasure to talk with you, and I appreciate it.